Meanwhile, Islam teaches a counterfeit morality. And I can't say this enough. Whatever God creates, Satan counterfeits. Okay? So, their morality might look like a brand new pair of Oakleys, using this analogy, right? And, uh, you know, they may have thought they got a fantastic deal when they were down in Mexico and got these true, authentic Oakleys for $7, right? Normally, they're like $500. They look like Oakleys from the outside, right? But in reality, they're just a cheap, a really cheap knockoff of what came before it. What comes first? The fake counterfeit, Thaddeus? Or the true authentic? That would be the authentic. Right. But Muslims try to tell you the opposite. They try to say, well, what came after Christianity is the true authentic. And what Christianity is, is the somehow created before fake one. Right? It's a preposterous idea. Right? So Islam is the cheap knockoff of Christianity and Judaism and paganism and all kinds of other weird things. <laughs> Islam is full of loopholes. We talked about these loopholes, contradictory moral statements, contradictory moral statements within itself. That's why they have to come up with a stupid concept called the law of abrogation, right? Apparently the all knowing God created an internal Quran that apparently had stakes that he had to correct. This is dumb. Okay. But within that are, are loopholes and then when you compare them to what supposedly he revealed before you'll find out that there are more contradictions and to a discerning mind to a discerning eye you can actually tell the difference which one's genuine and which one's the counterfeit right it's not that hard the counterfeit does not want to be examined thaddeus right the the, the person selling you the the Indeed. fake oakleys the folkleys he doesn't want you to examine him. He just says, look, it's a great deal. Seven dollars. Take it. Right. However, this is this is from Oakley's website. They want you to examine their 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 glasses. <laughs> it's just, it's insane. They're like, please learn our glasses. Look at them, understand them, research them. That way, when you when you buy a pair of Oakley's, you'll know the difference between the real pair and the cheap knockoff pair. Isn't that strange, right? We talked earlier. Ask, seek, knock. Christ mm -hmm. is saying, mm -hmm. examine me. Examine my, my statements. Examine this Bible. Right? And Christians do that. We examine the Bible. We have te textual criticism. We have source criticism. We have uh, historical criticisms of all of these types of things. We're, we are asking, seeking, knocking. We're trying to find the absolute most authentic Bibles and truths and all the types of things. Where we're not afraid. Absolutely. We're not scared. However, on the other end of the spectrum, I'm somewhat surprised that people like Yasser Qadi are still alive. Because they go on out on a limb and say there are holes in the standard narrative. The perfect preservation of the Quran isn't exactly perfectly preserved. It's a little bit different than what you've already thought. There's a red line. Don't cross this red line. Don't go past it. Don't examine it beyond beyond me just trust me the quran's preserved that's all you need to know what what should i write in this quran i, I mean i'm not exactly sure it'd probably be a combination of all these different musas what, what okay my point is when you're authentic you want to be examined mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. fake you shun away examination right so here's 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 the things right so uh Islam, and I mentioned this earlier, Islam promises, right, through the bait um, tactic, the emotional thing, it, it promises you that you can sin as much as you want in heaven. Right? You can go in front of their all-holy Allah, or whatever the heck he is, and you can sin and have all the hedonistic pleasures that you were so, you know, denying yourself, although you weren't denying yourself because you found loopholes because you could sleep with your slave women, your, your captives of war, that's not a problem, and you can marry up to four women. Right. Um, but, you know, whatever. There's loopholes, but, you know, ultimately you get 72 virgins or whatever. You get rivers flowing of wine, although wine is completely forbidden here on Earth. 
<coughs> excuse me. It's a, it's a system where people are rewarded with the things that they're trying to deny themselves, as opposed to the Christian system, the true system, the real system. The the seraphim, the angels, the, the archangels that live uh, uh, in the presence of God. Ever since their creation, they've been singing holy, holy, holy over and over and over again, right? God is that great. God is that amazing. The being in the presence of God is so awe-inspiring, right? That these archangels, these seraphim, they are just awestruck over and over and over. Every desire that they could possibly have is ultimately fulfilled being just in the mere presence of God. They don't need 72 virgins or however many they get. They don't need to have rivers flowing of wine. They don't need to be able to look at a picture and enter into it and then do whatever weird stuff that, that they desire to do. They don't need any of that. The Islamic paradise, to me, sounds like something Satan pretending to be God, masquerading as an angel of light, would promise people. If you worship me set five times a day, sticking your butt in one direction and your face in another direction... Um, and you do all these ritualistic things and are brainwashed, you know, then I'm going to give you all these sinful pleasures that only Satan himself would want. Because it, it, quite frankly, it's very easy for a Christian to see this. It's even easy for a secular atheist, for most of them, to see how absurd this uh, heaven idea is when it comes to Islam. Right? If, if that doesn't, if, if the Islamic concept of heaven and the loopholes and all these things, if that doesn't strike you as being the most obvious counterfeit religion of all time, I don't know how to help you. It's clearly satanically inspired and or a very evil-minded man or group of men came up with this concept because they don't give nothing to the women. But that's... Absolutely. Uh, Alpha Omega said, I believe all is not present in the Islamic heaven. And then he said, no, really, he isn't mentioned, supposedly. No, not and, and, yeah. and because all is irrelevant. I mean, I, I don't want to be blunt, but all is irrelevant. Uh, it's all about what you get in, in mm -hmm. paradise. Um, I've had Muslims be like, uh, I get a lot of cool stuff when I go to heaven. What do you get as a Christian? <laughs> I'm like, I get to be in the presence of God. And they're like, oh, that's lame. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. I mean, it, <laughs> you should be worshiping women and wine. Then, if 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 your whole goal is to get to heaven to to have hedonistic all your animalistic pleasures met, then why are you worshiping? Why why don't you worship those things? Yeah, well, uh, well, I mean, let me let me be blunt about this. Um, Muslims, you can have that now. Exactly. <laughs> if that's really what you want, that's really what you think you're going to get when you go to heaven and get the best thing possible, there's, you can get that now. There's there's a place called go out and Amsterdam. Get there's a place called Amsterdam. Um, there's a place called Las Vegas, right? There, there, you can do that. You can literally do that right now. Go for it and and worship 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 that. You know, like why. I don't know. It, it you're right. It, whoever it, you are, kind of taking God out of the equation. Um, God is really just this vending machine that can give you the things that you really want right now. So why deny yourself now? There's there's a, a great Christian saying that if you would get to to heaven and you'd be ha fine if Jesus wasn't there, then <laughs> you're not going to heaven because you don't understand what heaven is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it's not, you know, it may, may or may not be exactly how I described it, but that, you know, like Christ says, you know, you will drink, you'll never thirst again, right? I'm the bread of life. I'm the, I, I'm the, the vine, right? You, you'll never thirst again. Uh, uh, hedonistic pleasures, right? I eat, I sleep, I do whatever other activities that, that, that fulfills me for a timeline. And then I have to do it again and again. And again, right? Our entire human existence is essentially going from one sense of fulfillment to feeling empty, to fulfillment, to empty, to fulfillment, to empty, to fulfillment. That's a, that's exhausting. Whereas God, the true living God, can provide us that 100% fulfillment all the time. Right? You might think that's boring, but you don't actually understand God. Um, so that, I think that's what I'm going to say about that. 